right, folks, it's the start of 2023, and I shouldn't date this thing because it is a podcast, but the man in your screen, if you're watching on YouTube, and if you're listening on audio, you can go and check this one out. Dan, go, man. Welcome. How's it? Welcome to the podcast. I've become the biggest fan, and I found you on social media. I'm so glad you would join us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Mark. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for all the support uh, on Twitter and uh, beyond. And looking forward to helping out uh, your audience with uh, their health a little bit. Well, I figured out from watching you on social media, your content is prolific. and You're a real giver. You know, there's always something that you're coming out with their advice, high performance stuff to help people find their best self. So before we do that, let's do this. Um, we are a global audience here on On The Mark. Tell your story because I've looked into you some, and it is incredible how you have transformed yourself mm. and essentially the lessons you learned, you now parlaying and, and, and coaching folks to their very best. Yeah, 100%. So I grew up not knowing about health whatsoever. Uh, I was considered to be a latchkey kid. My parents were immigrants uh, from the Philippines, so all they were focused on was just surviving. So my idea of health was, or my idea of dieting was two Big Macs, a supersized fries and drinking a supersized Coke. Yeah. And I thought that that's what nutrition was. And I didn't realize it back then, but doing that and also just like not necessarily being healthy and not exercising, it led to just me not having the best brain. I, I dropped out of high school. I had a low sense of self. And I was always really ashamed of my body. Um, I always thought that being fat was like genetic, right? So like my dad had a belly, my brothers had bellies. And I was like, okay, well, I, I guess it's because of them. I'm going to have a belly. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until uh, one day, uh, my dad actually, he he started going to the gym every single day. Uh, this was actually during the time that he owned the business. And when he went to the gym, they gave him a one month pass because he just he just went like so much. I'm like, what is this guy doing? And what happened was he gave the one month pass to my brother and my brother, just like anything in life, he's like, I don't want this. So he passed it down to me. He was like, all right, you can go. And I really thought that the worst thing that would happen would be that I would see some really hot women. <laughs> and, uh, and the best thing would be like, Hey, maybe I got, I get my body in shape. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the first time that I went to the gym, I was just, uh, doing everything horribly wrong. And I was just kind of like spending time because I wasn't even doing anything better or anything uh, better with my time at that time. And lo and behold, a week later, I go into the change room, I'm changing and I'm putting down my belt and I'm just like, it, it goes in like one notch. And I'm yeah, just like, that's the best feeling, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the heck happened? And I was seeing some very attractive women in there. And at the same time, I'm like, okay, the, I'm pretty addicted to the results. And then I was also seeing such a change in the way I thought and also my self-perception. So that's sent me down this journey of transforming my body. And I have this, I guess you could say mantra where it's like, if you transform your body, you transform your life because all the things that lead up to you getting your body in shape when it comes to exercise, sleep, nutrition, it leads to actually creating a better brain for yourself. And ever since I transformed my body, that was a catalyst towards all of this amazing success. So I turned into a personal trainer after that, because I got so joyful about just exercise and changing people's bodies and changing people's lives. And then I owned a gym for about uh, 11 years and I sold that in 2018. And since 2018, I've been helping high achieving entrepreneurs transform their bodies with ease and minimal stress. And the reason I help entrepreneurs specifically is because they are my friends. Uh, they are the people that I spend the most time with. And every single time I went to like a mastermind, uh, or, you know, the masterminds like this thing where all these entrepreneurs go to, I'd be so like surprised when they actually came in and they're so freaking out of shape. So I was like, I, I got to change this and I got to make sure that entrepreneurs have like the three pillars of their life when it comes to like exercise, sleep, and nutrition all lined up because it's just going to make them a better person in the, in the end. Uh, you know what? You, you get my mind spinning and, and one, uh, I found you because someone I follow retweeted something of yours and then i was you know the typical thing just scroll yeah. down and there were two tweets that hit me and that's when you sort of jogged me a little bit and i'm like i need to show this guy to the golf population <laughs> and and the, the one which was telling and so true was something to the effect of you know at large our 
population's diet is so bad that eating healthy is considering considered dieting. And I laughed and I was like, dang, this is so true, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny because the way, whenever I put people on diets, they're always, they're, the first thing that I get from a lot of people is like, this type of eating is like boring. <laughs> when I tell people the way that I eat, they're like, oh, that seems so boring. And the funny thing is, is that I think the tweet was, is like, we eat so much junk food that eating real food is considered yeah. dieting, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I want to tell this story because like my client um, ended up going to dinner and he was, uh, while everyone else, everyone that goes out to dinner, they just have to like go hard, you know, they have to like drink the drinks, they have to get the fried appetizers, they have to do all that kind of stuff. And then he was getting a steak and he was getting a steak, he had, he asked them to cook it with butter, he asked them to put the uh, side of veggies instead of fries, and then he asked for a uh, soda water with lime in it. And all of his friends were just like, yo, well, like, come on, live a little and all this kind of stuff. And he was telling me, it's like, when do we get to a point where eating crap food is the is synonymous with living a little with having fun right and the funny thing is is that us as a modern society has changed so much and it's because of like the foods that we have allowed into our lives so like now our concept or a lot of people's concept of like breakfast is eating a donut and drinking a coffee when the reality is <laughs> and the reality is is like no, like before we actually used to eat real food. We used to eat like oats in order to provide ourselves energy to go throughout the entire day. We did not have like th the amount of processed foods that we have right now. So, so yeah, I mean, like uh, I do believe that as a society, we have regressed in terms of like the way that we have eaten. And it's uh, my job to uh, poke some holes into that and get people on the other side. Well, we're going to poke holes in a little while when we talk about your rule of three, which I love. Yeah. It's a great yeah. New Year's resolution. There was a tweet, though, that I favorited, and this is when I reached out to you. And this is a 52-year-old man hit me sort of a square between my eyes, and I'll read it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you tweet, it was in early January-ish. You go, we lose about 3 to 8% of muscle per decade after the age of 30. Mm -hmm. And this rate accelerates at age 60. Lifting has been proven uh, beneficial for heart health as well. If I could do only one form of exercise for the rest of my life, it would be lifting weights. Yeah. Now, I want your commentary here, and I'm going to preface it with a lot of golfers, right? They're like, well, I don't want to lift because I'm going to get stiff. Hmm. All thinking they're going to turn into these muscle-bound people, but the reality is they aren't. So they're averse to the stuff, and you see them trudging away on the treadmill, uh, and yeah. the thing, they're just really just sweating instead of really changing their bodies. Yeah. So as we age, I look at it as a like a flower we tend to wither and what we need to do as we age is to fortify ourselves and to and to make sure that we are maintaining if not gaining uh, the amount of muscle that we have on our body i look at muscle as like compound interest right so the more muscle that you have on your body the better for your hormones is going to be the uh, the more mobile you will be able to be when you get older. Like think of it like, hey, squatting is like just like going up and down from the toilet. A deadlift is like picking up a box off the ground. Properly. And, and the yeah, key is probably because yeah, so guys properly. Guys cheat. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And uh, one of the things that uh, you said, which is like everyone thinks that they pick up a weight, they're going to look like a muscle bound, like bodybuilder or whatever <laughs> that is. What they don't realize is that bodybuilders take a huge amount of PEDs and steroids and what they don't understand is that when they exercise and when they lift weights, what they are also doing is they're increasing range of motion, right? So weightlifting is not just to gain muscle, it's actually to gain more flexibility. And that's what people don't necessarily see. So I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs who just happen to be golfers, who just happen to kind of like want to increase or up-level their golf game. What they found is we never we never trained them to do better at golf. Never. We never did golf, you know, it's quote unquote specific exercises. But doing the exercises that we do inside the gym, they have found a direct effect on their golf game. They're driving harder. They are more in control of the accuracy of their shots because they have more control over their core and they also have more control over their hip mobility. And one thing that we have to understand is that. Aside from golf, aside from performance, 
you know, lifting to me is like the the holy grail for it's like the fountain of youth. And when I think of like people, especially like now here, I'm in here in Costa Rica and I'm like privy to seeing the both sides of the elderly, um, people who have not lifted weights and people who have lifted weights. And when I see people who have not lifted weights well into their old age, what happens as a result is you see their bodies wither and you see that they're more likely to get uh, any forms of injuries by doing something like simple, like maybe like surfing or maybe even like tripping over something. Uh, for the people who are lifting weights, they are independent. They are able to walk wherever they want. They are able to run wherever they want. They are able to surf without being scared of being injured. Yeah. And muscle is the fortification against the fraying of life. So what we want to do is we don't have to like work out like a bodybuilder. We don't have to like work out like a power lifter. What we have to do is we have to use something that we call progressive overload. And we have to just like in progressive overloads, just like the, the steadily increasing of the intensity of an exercise using reps or weights or a various, there's actually various other means and just getting stronger inside the gym. And when you focus on that and you do that as a lifelong practice, you're going to see that quality of life is going to increase as you age. And I'll leave you this one thing right here uh, to close this off. So a 30 year old man who doesn't lift is just as strong as a 60 year old man who lifts, right? So if you lift into your age, whatever age it is, you are going to have the vitality or at least the quality of life from a body perspective as a 30 year old man would have if they didn't lift. I have to ask this um, again, marching orders, I guess. Um, it's never too late. Yeah. It, it's not the question. Let's say we've got someone listening to this who's you know, north of 50, hasn't really worked out throughout their life, sedentary, bad hip mobility, all that seated stuff, you know, bad posture. It's never too late to start, right? Never. It's uh, It's never too late to start. The funny thing about muscle is it has memory. So if you work out long enough, you work out consistently enough, regardless of whatever age that you're at, what's going to happen is, is that your muscle is going to remember where it was before. And I'll use this as an example. So one of my friends, he has his uh, wife training her 80 year old dad. When he started, he was doing five pound weights. He was uh, goblet squatting, like barely anything. He was actually starting off with body weight squats. Now, six months into his training, all the weights have gone up to a level where, let's just say a sedentary 30-year-old man would have trouble lifting. And all they did was just like gently and steadily lifted with good form, increased the weight just like a little bit, focus on doing things properly, making sure they're staying one to two reps away from failure so they can keep their form really tight. And then at 80 years old, he's as strong as he's ever felt in his entire life. So it's never too late. Uh, you should, if you are listening to this right now, regardless of whatever age you're in, you have to understand that if you get started now, it's better than if you get started 10 years from now, it's better than, you know, waiting till tomorrow. Um, the best time to plant a tree was uh, yesterday. The next best time to plant a tree is right now. Uh, I muted myself there for a second. <laughs> um, I, I, the, that is so awesome. And it's almost the perfect segue for us to get to your rule of three. So I'm going to yes. share my screen a little bit here and close down these goodies so folks can see what we're looking at. Um, hold on. All right. Here we are. So you there can see go. what I'm looking at, correct? Yes. All right. For the folks watching on YouTube, pardon me, I was having a little bit of a technical issue there for the folks listening no worries because dan and i are going to describe what he calls the rule of three now this is available on your website which is highperformancefounder.com yes um, uh high performance founder i moved to danfounder.com but you can get this at highperformancefounder.com as well right perfect. yeah so hey, describe, yeah. describe the rule of three before we dive into what the rule of three entails please 100 percent. so the rule of three is what I would call a system for just health maintenance, right? Mm -hmm. We can even call it immaculate health, uh, depending on where you're starting from, because if a beginner uses this, or if someone who's just like getting back into the gym uses the system and abides by the system, they are going to be in way better shape than the, what I would say, like 90% of the average population. Right. So 
the rule of three is just very simple. It's it, it's basically three workouts per week, three nutrient dense meals per day, and three liters of water a day. Okay. Okay. So the three workouts per week would be strength related. Um, you would be I'm doing strength scroll, training. Scroll, oh, sorry. Yeah. There, there we go. There's rule. There, yeah. The second rule right there. Yeah. So it would be doing strength training inside the gym. Uh, you don't need to like what a lot of people think is like you need to spend like six or seven days inside the gym. If you want to work out every day, that's cool. You know, that's awesome. But you really only need like three 30 minute sessions at the gym, just basically doing strength training work in there. That's enough to gain muscle for the beginner and, or for the person who's just getting back in there. And that is enough to just have a solid amount of muscle on your body that will be serving you until later in life. The second thing, or we can call it the first thing, which would be three single ingredient nutrient dense meals a day. So people always ask me, what's a single ingredient nutrient dense meal? Well, mm -hmm. it's like this. So single ingredient means like you only have one ingredient in it. Chicken only has chicken. A watermelon only has watermelon. Yeah. Uh, broccoli only has broccoli. Like if you get like a, a Beyond Meat Burger, like Beyond Meat Burger has like 50,000 ingredients inside of it, you know? So that's what I mean by single ingredient. Basically, it's like another cool term for like whole foods, right? Mm -hmm. So you would eat whole foods and you will want them to be somewhat nutrient dense. You would want to have as much nutrient value inside of them as possible. So things like salmon, steak, eggs, leafy greens, uh, berries, things of that nature, you want to be littering your, uh, your meals with. And then you would only eat three meals a day. And the, the way in which I would actually eat this is very specific to one's own natural rhythm. So this is uh, this is actually an addition to this uh, little, little right. rule, which is the sense that when we eat, there's like this, your body has like a natural rhythm to the way that it likes to eat. Right. I call this like eating to your circadian rhythm. So basically before you go to sleep, you would have your last meal about three to five hours before you go to sleep. All right. And you would have your first meal about one to two hours upon waking. And then you would have your second meal somewhere in the middle. Right. And you would not snack in between whatsoever. You would just drink water instead of snacking. There and that's a challenge, huh? You know, it's amazing. It's amazing because I, I am personal here. Um, thank for, thankfully, my wife, she started, you know, just being disciplined about eating because we work out. And in the interests of eating healthy, I was eating what was a lot of protein, but constantly, and I was picking up weight, not healthy weight, I would say. Mm. And it's this disciplined eating and not eating the crust off the kid's sandwich and all that <laughs> stuff, just you know, picking. You don't realize it, but at the end of the day, you've consumed a ton of calories. Yes. And you're wondering, why on earth have I got this dad belly going on? Yeah, exactly. Like when I think about, um, when I think about food, it, goes from like the most basic which is like the caloric content then it goes to the macronutrient content then it goes to the nutrient value which has a tremendous impact on your mood your energy your focus so you know when i think about like just eating it's like one of those pillars that uh that you just want to focus on now the last part is going to be drinking three liters of water a day now this number is going to be uh debatable i mean for a lot of people some people can't drink that amount that's fine but essentially, we want to trade every single one of the liquids that we drink, except for maybe coffee or tea, with water. You okay. would drink your water between your meals. You would drink your water upon waking. First thing upon waking, you would drink your water. You would actually stop drinking water about like two or three hours before you go to sleep. And you would just want to make sure that water is one of those things that you're drinking on a regular basis. Because a lot of times when we think that we're hungry, we're really like dehydrated or bored. So that's where water comes in. The other thing is, is also when it comes to uh, drinking water, it actually gives you energy. Our bodies are made of like 60% water. So, you know, think about like the difference between like putting a, a beer in your, in your belly or, you know, drinking a, a bottle of water, you know, what type of energy, energetic output are you going to get from that? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times with dehydration as well, it makes us tired and that actually causes us to like have really horrible, like food choices and really horrible, like mood control. So, Water is one of those things that's just like a staple and get, you know, clean, purified water, filtered water. It should be fine. And that's like the rule of three. It just makes things super simple for everybody. I'm going to make a statement here and I want you to correct me if you think I'm wrong. Um, sure. I, uh, for things like blood pressure and all that sort of stuff as well, I, I feel like the majority of folks from the Western half of the world are chronically dehydrated. Yeah. Uh, and so as a result, we snack on sugary stuff. And that throws mood, everything just all over the place. 
And then, as you say, then we think you're hungry because you're eating, but you're still remaining hungry. And then you're just jamming stuff in your body. And in the end, one of the benefits here you talk about is it gives you better hunger control. Yeah. Because if you feel like you've got a snack and you drink water, you're doing yourself such a favor, not just, you know, calorically, but just overall well-being, huh? Yeah, it's it's like a cascade effect, right? So let's just say like you snack on something uh, really sugary, like a chocolate croissant in between a meal. And what that does is like what people don't realize is like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat a chocolate croissant. Well, one, you're probably not hungry. Most likely like you're a little bit like dehydrated. Plus two, you eat the chocolate croissant. You're like training your taste buds to be attuned towards uh, processed foods, attuned towards sugars. The other thing is also like when you eat that chocolate croissant, what's going to happen is, is that it's going to increase like uh, it's going to increase your, increase your blood sugar. It's going to uh, decrease your focus. It's going to decrease your concentration. You're going to have a big spike of energy. Then you're going to have like a little bit of a down. That's going to cause you to want to eat more foods like that. So it's it's kind of like this, like, I guess you could say this cascade effect of just like negative consequences. So that's why I say drink water. And if you ever feel like you you're hungry, you're like, oh, no, I need to eat. Like, do the apple test. You know, I always call it the apple test, which is like, hey, if you're, you're hungry enough to eat an apple, go eat an apple, all right? Mm -hmm. If you are not hungry enough to eat an apple, then pretty much like that doesn't mean you're hungry. It just means like you're bored, most likely. <laughs> I'm going to say that to my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sh I, don't, I don't know about telling your family members that. You know, it's like, I'm going to say Mr. Dan said so. Hey, yeah. You, you talk about the three workouts a week. You said 30 minutes. You sort of gave it some time. I got yeah. some, I got a follow-up question to that, but just as I scroll down and the folks on YouTube can see this, yeah. uh, you can say do three X's per wor workout. And, and, <laughs> and, and that to me is so liberating too, because most folks get in the gym and they're like, all right, kind of what do I do now? And yeah. then they do a little bit of this and they most folks go for the bicep curls. If you're a guy, you know, you know the drill. And mm -hmm. you talk about squats, ben bench pressing, deadlifting, really functional movement, overhead press, hip thrusts, um, yeah. rowing, you know, stuff we sort of do in everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really love the idea of just uh, simplifying. And uh, in terms of like the foundationals, I want to focus on the basics and the foundationals. So that's where you're going to get like the, actually, I was talking to a client about this, where the first year of working with each other, we likened it to building the foundation of a house. And he was always like, why am I not doing these cool exercises that I see on IG and whatnot? I'm like, we're focusing on these foundational exercises because one, you're going to get the best benefit out of them. Two, that's going to give you the foundation to do those cool exercises in the first place. So the exercise that you saw right there, which was um, the squat bench, deadlift, uh, overhead press, the back row, the hip thrust, chin up. Uh, these are not necessarily exercises to do, but movements to do inside of the gym or beyond. Right. So you can actually take these, use them as movements and build upon them. And then every single one of your workouts, uh, you can just like choose three of these. And then you can just focus on getting strong at these three, do them over and over and over until you reach your plateau. And then that's when you can kind of like get out of the foundation building and then get into like, you know, sort of like, I guess you could say like the more intermediate stuff. Very right, right, cool. I, yeah. I just want to ask this. Um, so we've we've uh, stimulated someone to making a little life change here. Um, you're good at that sort of stuff. Now they're like, all right, I'm going in now. I'm going to take this Dan go seriously. Um, mm -hmm. They show up in the gym. T talk to me a little bit about sort of warming up or preparing the body and yeah. just importantly, the mind before you get into this stuff when we are in the gym. Yeah. Great question. This is like my, this is my bag, so to speak. Right, I love yeah. this. Mm -hmm. So I have this theory where I say that the older that one gets, uh, the more we have to put emphasis and focus on how we warm up. Right. Mm -hmm. So I like to look at warm up from a multi-pronged angle. And when I explain this, a lot of people are going to be like, I don't have time to do this. Well, I'm going to show you a way that you can kind of consolidate all this. So Number one is going to be soft tissue work, right? So we want to do foam rolling. We want to roll on like lacrosse balls. And we want to make sure that uh, we are just working on our soft tissue before getting inside the gym. We do this because it's going to help us increase range of motion when we do these exercises. And when we get range of motion, when we do these exercises, we can actually increase range of motion throughout our entire lives if we do this over and over and over again. And also, it just helps us prevent injuries in the first place. So number one is going to be soft tissue work. Number two is what I call dynamic stretching. 
dynamic stretching is using exercise. So a lot of times, like the, the common thought is just to stretch for about 30 seconds, go to the next one, stretch for about 30 seconds. Yeah. Dynamic stretches are basically like it's, I use one called the world's greatest stretch. And you, you go into say this like hip mobility uh, movement where you're stretching out your hips for about one to two seconds. You go into a movement where you're stretching out your thoracic spine for about one to two movements. And if you want to search this, you can actually search this on Google. You can find it right there. Right. And then the last movement is going to be stretching out your hamstrings for about one to two seconds per movement. And we want to use dynamic stretches because what happens is, is that if you hold a stretch for about 30 seconds, that actually relaxes your muscle. You want to work through these fle your flexibility in a dynamic way because that's going to help you increase flexibility, increase range of motion, but it's also going to help you warm up and turn on your body as well. And also, you you don't want to like turn off your body. You don't want to relax it. You want to increase the the heart rate a little bit while you do this, and that's what dynamic stretching is. The last part is going to be activation. I like to activate the parts of the body that are going to be used inside of the workout. So it could look like this in two ways. Let's just say we're doing a lower body workout. I would do some like glute bridges right before I get into a lower body workout so I can use my glutes inside the workout. Because if you're sitting down for long periods of time and you're going to try to do some squats or whatever it is, you want your glutes. You actually want to remember how to use your glutes. A lot of times people like use their, uh, their quads yeah. for their squats when they should be using their glutes. I want to activate the muscles that I want to use, which is going to be the ass or sorry, the, the glutes and the core <laughs> and, uh, and, and also like, um, any other kind of like exercise. So if it's like a chest press, I would do say like 50% of the weight that I tend to use and then use my mind to muscle connection to activate my chest as I am doing the exercise. So I go through that three-step process. I call it kind of like the seven minute superhuman mm -hmm. where you go through soft tissue work, you go through dynamic stretches, and then you go through activations. And then once you're done, your body's warmed up, you feel really good. You feel really uh, ready for the workout. And then once you do that, you can actually do that for the workout, or you can do that even like before doing a round of golf. And then what you're doing is you're preventing injury and you're also making yourself more prepared for the activity itself. Fantastic. Just the end of this uh, blog you wrote makes yeah. it a little bit easier. This is reasons to focus on strength in the gym. Promotes fat-free body mass, improves bone density. That's a big one for the folks aging. Increases yeah. connective tissue strength, muscles, and tendons. But the big one improves overall quality of life. Yeah. I was just actually uh, working with a client, uh, talking to a client right before this. Mm -hmm. And his bone density score after like a year, uh, I think it went up uh, a few centimeters, which is actually like quite significant. Yeah. And that's just like, he's 52, actually he's like about 52 years old and his bone density just started to increase along with his lean mass. So a lot of things can happen. It doesn't matter what age you're at. Strength training is for everyone. It's never too late. All right. This is a big one that you dropped on me that I'm so glad we are because I talk about being chronically dehydrated. I think uh, our generation is chronically underslept. Yeah. Teagued. Uh, and you mm -hmm. wanted to talk about uh good sleep, healthy sleep habits, but which look for whether you're an entrepreneur, a businessman, businesswoman, mom at home, golfer, whatever the case might be. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm an ambassador for whoop. I love this thing because it's mm. taught me about healthy sleep habits. Um, mm. Please go there a little bit and share some of your insights. Yeah. So when it comes to sleep, I look at it as a lead domino. So when I started to focus on my health journey, so to speak, I thought it was just like exercise and nutrition, Yeah. but I was missing a big part of that, which was sleep. So let's go through kind of like the basics of sleep right now, which is, I don't need to tell you like the short-term and long-term consequences if you are sleep deprived. I mean, you can Google that. That's, it's pretty apparent and, pe and a lot of people know that not getting sleep bad for you, right? But let's go through the basics of like the biggest mistakes that I see people usually making with their sleep. So there are three big mistakes that I usually see. Number one is uh, they eat really too close to the time that they sleep. So this is where nighttime eating comes into play. So if they have a snack right before they go to sleep, this actually disrupts the amount of sleep that they get throughout the night. Yeah. The other mistake that I see is not enough sun exposure. So sun exposure is one of those things that turns on your circadian rhythm. It sends a signal to your brain saying, hey, what's up? It's time to wake up. All right. Now, if you're not getting enough sun exposure, if you're underneath artificial light or like blue light, 
what's happening as a result is, is one, you're not able to attune your circadian rhythms to what is happening in nature. And also two, when you try to go to sleep, you're going to be, you're not necessarily going to get the quality of sleep that you need. The more time that you spend inside or outside in the sun, that's actually going to be where your best sleep comes from. The last mistake that I see people make is modern living. It's looking at screens right before they go to bed. You can mitigate this to a large degree. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you can mitigate this to a large degree by putting on blue light blockers, but I find that the best uh, method to actually getting the best sleep is actually to avoid screens for at least one hour uh, before they go. Now, I have this simple system that I use with my clients that just increases their sleep immediately, almost like night and day, no pun intended. And, <laughs> Good, and, and pr- yeah, and it's pretty much called the three to one sleep method. All so right. the three to one sleep method goes like this three hours before you go to sleep. No food or no food goes into your body. Okay. Um, two hours before you go to sleep, no liquids go into your body because that can actually cause some people or a lot of people to urinate in the middle of the night. The second or the last one is going to be screens, like no screens, at least like one hour before you go to sleep. And what you're going to do instead, you're going to read like a fiction book or you're going to do some stretching or journaling or some like uh, breath work to kind of like calm your nervous system down. Mm-hmm. And then that little system, that little routine before you go to sleep is going to increase only not only the propensity for you to go to sleep in the first place, your ability to go to sleep right when your head touches the pillow. It's also going to uh, increase the quality of your sleep. You're going to be able to sleep much more deeper into the night instead of doing like multiple wake-ups like a lot of people do because they're not necessarily focused on their sleep habits so much. I want to uh, just come quickly before I let you go. It's been so insightful and helpful. Um, You you talked about the breathing and a little meditation before sleep. Um, I think this is a big one because people never really switch off either. Um, uh, And you said, well, you know, you could read a fictional book, you can read a book or you can you even use work out a little bit, you know, get some exercise or stretch or whatever the case yeah. might be. Um, but then that breathing just to sort of calm the vagal response uh, is uh, to me is I've found very helpful. So would you describe, yeah. would you talk please? Yeah, a hundred percent. So I look at the breath as the, the light switch for your nervous system. Okay. So if you really want to get hyped up, and you know, be ready and just like be ready to go. You're gonna find that a lot of people breathe through their mouth and hyperventilate through their mouth, right? If they're really out of breath, and if they're really in a physical uh, type of activity, and that increases your heart rate. That's if you want to get like really like into the physical activity. Yeah. Now, if you want to chill your nervous system out, it would actually be a little bit different. So I have this thing called the four seven eight uh, breathing method. Which is what, um, which is called box breathing as well. It's like what Navy SEALs use to like calm their nerves and to really just like focus in on the target and what they're doing. But the four seven eight breathing method, it is basically used before you go to sleep to just like calm yourself, to get yourself in a state of mind, and to get your nervous system in a in a state where you are going to be prepared to relax and rest. So four seven eight looks like this: you're going to breathe through your nose for about four seconds. You're going to hold for about seven seconds. And then you're going to breathe out through pursed lips for about eight seconds. And you do this for about 10 to 15 rounds. I swear to you, if you do this right before you go to sleep, you will find that your brain is turned off, your head hits the pillow, and then you are just like primed to just go to sleep at that very moment. And a lot of times when we think about sleep, what we want to do is we want to look at it as like this this way in which we are just like bringing our nervous system down and our brain down to a level where we are getting into a restful state. That's why we want to stay away from like emails, social media, things of that nature, things that would get like us riled up. And we also want to make sure that we do everything possible to turn our brain off and to turn our nervous system off right before we go. So breathing is one of those, uh, is one of those switches that is going to allow us to do that. Man, for golfers too, if you're a little uh, ramped yeah. up before you're going to go and play, the four, seven, eight a few times will not settle you down to where you're going to sleep, but certainly yeah. reduce some of the panic uh, because that's, you know, I don't think people realize they're panicking so much, but what's going on inside yeah. is, you, yeah. you know, that, that's real. Yeah. Because like what it does is it gets you out of your brain and into your body. Yeah. So they've done studies, right? So it's like, they've done studies where it's like when people are in social situations and they see social or they feel social anxiety, what they are doing is they're very much inside of their brains. And I'm guessing this is very much the same for a sports focused type of activity, like golf, where you're thinking 
But the best golf that happens is actually happening when you are not necessarily thinking at all. You're focused on the external. You were actually focused on like for me, like I just went surfing today. I found that I was like in my head a little bit. So I started to like look at the waves. I started to figure out, okay, so which one, where do I put myself in this position to get in the best possible position for this one? I put my brain outside of my body and into the environment. And that, that's what breathing does. It allows us to get out of our brains, into our bodies, and focused on exactly what we have to do. Mm, the zone. Dan, um, well, look, I, you've, uh, I'm not going to uh, stay on the phone that much before I sleep, but I don't know when I'm going to read your stuff. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll have to find it in some more time during the day. Um, you've been tremendous. I'm sure the folks want to find out more, maybe consult with you, whatever. Yeah. Please share social media, website, all that sort of stuff where they can find you. Uh, they can just go to danfounder.com or they can go to Twitter at fitfounder.com. That's where I do most of the stuff. Or you can actually just Google me. Uh, you can find me there as well. So like uh, pretty much danfounder.com is like where I house like all my articles and uh, all the stuff that I do on a regular basis. So hit that up. It's well worth your while. I'm going to yeah. ask you to leave us with this. Tie yeah. a bow on this conversation. Give you, we've given lots of marching orders, but what's the marching orders you just had to sign off to say, okay, folks, off you go now. I would say that uh, if I were to say anything to anyone, um, the thing that's coming up for me right now is to never use your age as, a, as an excuse for the work that you didn't do. Love it. So, you know, don't, don't make excuses, uh, take action and work with what you got. And that's what I would say to everyone, because a lot of people are just complaining about, oh, I don't have genetic, I don't have the genetics. Oh, I'm, my body's in pain, like all this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, focus on what you can do. Screw whatever age that you're at and really just like focus in on what the solution is and not what the problem is and take action. He's Dan Go. You're a legend, man. This was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for joining thank us. You. It's been so great to have you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.